Hey everybody, welcome back to the Banjo-Kazooie playthrough. This is part four, and we're going to cover, uh, Clink Clanker's Cavern. Clinker? Clanker? I've lost my train of thought. Anyways, it's Clinker's Cavern. Um, so I'm doing this in a different format, and, uh, of course it's been a while since I've done any of these, so, um, the different format is I'm doing this post-commentary, because I found it just a bit easier to record the gameplay without talking first, and then doing the recording later. Um, second, I've actually done this recording before on my old computer, but stuff has happened. One, I kind of lost interest a little bit. Two, my one laptop that I had uh, kicked the bucket. And so, three, I was going to use a new laptop, but still didn't have too much interest, um, even though I'd already recorded the footage a bit ago. Um, but I've since gotten another computer that can probably handle this a lot better. So hopefully, um, you know, I can continue on with this series now. That, and I don't really have many games that I'm working on. Um, playing wise that have de you know I've been devoting a lot of attention to so there you go so yeah this is Clanker's Cavern this is the third stage of the game um, I consider this like a first sort of wall of the game and it used to kind of creep me out as a kid because I don't really like the underwater stages of the game um, I don't know what it is it's just a very creepy atmosphere of a game uh, of a stage so like you know, the first one, it was a mountaintop, um, wasn't a lot, very huge. Um, second one was Treasure Trove Cove, um, you know, still it had a more of a cheery atmosphere, and then this one is very disgusting, so, and the music doesn't really help, um, especially when we go to a later portion where it's gonna get really creepy sounding, but yeah, um, you begin out with that intro stage, kind of a hub area, and when you go down into this tubble, you meet Clanker, who is unfortunately stuck in the water due to Gruntilda, and he's really wanting some fresh air. And so there's a lot of jiggies that you can, or there's only a few jiggies that you can get um, around here without doing much with Clanker, but of course in order to actually finish the stage, you're going to help have to help him um, raise up so he can get some fresh air again. So... Um, and this area is kind of a maze just because, you know, if you haven't played through it before, um, there's just a lot of these underwater tunnels here. Um, where you're not really sure if you've already covered them or if something's going to be inside of them. And of course, it's hard to kind of, you know, you want to be able to make sure that you find everything. But at the same time, you have to be weary of the fact that now you're... This is the first stage to really utilize the air meter because, of course, we're swimming. So, um, and I will say that for this playthrough, I probably won't be using. Well, I won't be using any of the cheats. I probably not. Probably I won't be using any of the cheats. But there is an infinite air cheat um, to use. But I'm beyond that. That was way back when I first started to play. So. And we're going to get our first Jiggy here, which is part of a quote-unquote boss battle with the Snippet Mutants that are here. They're just a little bit tougher than the Snippets that were in the other area, but a nice ground pound will take care of them easily. Of course, I say that, and I'm having basic issues trying to roll into them. Yeah, not much to say about this fight. It's it's like most of the stuff in Banjo Kazooie. They don't really have boss fights, not until the sequel, Banjo Tooie, where they actually had devoted boss fights for every single stage. Um, but for this one, you know, it's like yeah, here it is. So you get just a mook rush of sorts, um, and there'll be another mook rush in the next stage. Um, there's only like really one. Sort of, maybe two? No, really only one I can think of boss battle type situation, um, besides the final boss itself. So, everything else is kind of a boot brush, if there is one. Yep, that's our first Jiggy, so. So, yeah, we'll keep continuing. 
Hang on, a little bit of pop in there. So there's some, I believe there's some notes down in here. Yep. Sometimes it's hard to tell because it's either notes or it's gold feathers. And of course, at this point, really you can't utilize gold feathers. Um, you'll notice that sometimes I kind of do broad strokes with Kazooie versus uh, like Banjo's feet paddle. Um, that's just a different button to use. So, um, I want to say B is the sh broad strokes with Kazooie's wings, and then A is to just kind of, you know, use Banjo's feet to kind of dog paddle maneuver around underwater. Um, in the sequel, there's a, you can get the ability to use both at the same time to increase your speed by hitting both B and A at the same time. But of course, we won't be able to get that in this game. Um, but of course, broad strokes is for purely for speed to get around, and then A you kind of want to use in order to be able to navigate, like right here, where it's like, otherwise you'll just keep running into the wall. So, and this one's kind of weird because you have to f turn around, but the camera's still facing where your backside was originally. So it's kind of tight to get through here. That's why I would, if this is your first time playing, I would always practice swimming just to be able to maneuver pretty well through there. Um, so we had another jiggy, or yeah, we had a jiggy. So now we're going to go down here in the clankers, um, below clanker where the, his lock and chain is. Um, and this is what I was talking about earlier with creepy music. It's just a... I don't know. It's like, yay, this is where I want to be. Uh, there's a Jinjo here, and then there's notes. Um, so this area, and I kind of have a camera issue here, but so this area, um, yeah, it's Gloop. He's going to give you air, so you won't. So obviously it'll be too hard to be able to go down here and get, you know, go through and get all the notes and go through the loop. Um, on the other side of this weight right there um, in time before you run out of air. So Gloop is here, of course, so he's constantly generating bubbles. So if you swim into those, you'll restore about two units of air every time. And it's one of those two where it's kind of hard to tell the depth perception because, of course, it's not like there's any shadows are being cast by bubbles. So you kind of just swim towards it and you hope you get to it before it... Um, inevitably pops but yeah I just kind of went for some safety and got a lot of air so I was back full before I decided to get the last remaining notes and then start tackling the um, actual I don't know what you want to call it unlocking of the lock mechanism I'm assuming because it's a key and I guess it's just holding it in place it's almost like an anchor, like a reverse anchor. Or an anvil. Kind of looks like an anvil, but... Yeah, so this one, you, you just have to swim through. Um, so it's pretty easy to just kind of... I had to get... I went and got some air there, and I'm doing something stupid where I should have just waited... Um, and let the camera rotate correctly. Now it's just being all kinds of garbage right now. Um, but what you can do is you can kind of swim through it and then stop. Um, by like, so if you're doing a broad stroke, you can start doing uh, Banjo's A maneuver, and that kind of kind of shoots him back into place. So you can kind of stop and then just turn right around and maneuver through there. But yeah, you do it a few times and. Clanker will slowly rise back up. And of course we get a jiggy for it. So now at this point, um, I was going to get some air, but once again, depth perception was kind of a problem. So I got to grab it, and then you can just shoot straight up and hightail it. In this game, um, even though you get health upgrades, you never get any air upgrades. Um, Banjo-Tooie, there is air upgrades. Um, 
or they're not necessarily upgrades, but I'm pretty sure it runs off of health. So the more health you have, the more error that you have as well. Yeah, so now we can get these notes that are sitting here. And basically the rest of Clanker's Cavern has opened up to us because um, you'll see he has like a bolt that chews up out of his air hole. Um, and that'll lead you to an area up top. Um, but there's also a lot of stuff inside Clanker as well. So we'll be able to get through that. This one, if we go on the tail, the flutter over and get to shoot um, a few eggs at the um, gate over there. Oh, I hate the shooting of the eggs in this game. There you go. It's like you have to maneuver into the sweet spot and then you can get to it. So you shoot a few eggs. And it opens up for you. And then you drop down and you can get some notes here. There's a Mumpo token in front of those um, things that shoot out of the wall. I don't really remember what they're called. Um, they're pretty annoying. Uh, you'll see them in a... They're kind of redressed in a couple of other stages as well. Um, where they look like skeletons in Mad Monster Mansion. And then there's parrot versions in Click Clock Woods. And I think those have like really weird hit detection on them. There's something off about them. And that was me having a fail with that. Oh, and then you can see a lot of this too is waiting for this to get like back up. And that one was like one of those where the jump gets eaten and I think it's because of the platform moving. It's like it counts as you moving as well. So it's one of those where it's like, take your time. There we go, we got another life. Um, you can use the spring jump, spring on over to this pole and climb on up. Um, and there should be a Jinjo down in there. So there's notes along here as well. So if you use Talon Trot, um, you know, you can collect those first. Otherwise, if you try to walk on this banjo, you slide down. So we get the Jinjo there, or I guess I'm wrong, Pink Man, whatever. Um, if you stop on this, you can get a honeycomb piece. So that's always convenient. So I think at this point, um, we're going to go and actually, um, we're going to go fly up to the top first. Because the game plan I had was to try and go, oh, no. This is what happens when I don't remember what I've recorded, and I haven't looked at the footage since then. But I think I was going to jump up there, but then I was like, oh, we haven't gone up here yet. Because um, I know at least there's a Mumbo token and some notes. But the game plan is, you know, get this stuff taken care of first and then head on inside um, Planker. And I hate these jumps because sometimes you. It's like you try to. You want to stay close to the wall where you're flutter jumping, but sometimes it's almost like it eats your inputs too, and then you get like gravitating towards the wall while you're doing it, so then you almost look like you're not going to be able to make it. There's some notes over there as well. So yeah, you have that flies run up, and then you have to go in this narrow path, which, you know, you don't want to run too fast, but at the same time, because if you do, then you fall down, and then you have to wait to get back up again. <sighs> Clanker, his eyes kind of follow you. He's kind of weird. Um, this is the only game with Clanker in it. Well, 
Clanker doesn't show up in the sequel. There's an area called Clanker's Cavern, which is a whole different thing. But um, he does show up in the um, Nuts and Bolts game. I almost fell off there. Um, he shows up in Nuts and Bolts, and um, he's in Banjo Land. And unfortunately, he hasn't been completely put together. So you, but he's still alive. So it's pretty weird. And it's one of those where um, he has like fleshy parts, but he's also mechanical. So it's just, it's like he's a cyborg shark. I don't know. This should be the next honeycomb piece. Yep, there we go. Because we've gone through three stages, two pieces each. We've added an extra honeycomb piece. So cool. Every extra bit of life will help. Um, but you can use the spring jump to get up to this one, and then, uh, yeah, you can start climbing up this pole and get those remaining notes, um, get some eggs, and then you get the bumbo token. And now, at this point, we should be good to actually start taking care of everything on the inside of Clanker. So, Clanker, Clanker, Clanker. Tomato, tomato, it's not, but. Um, so this one. Uh, as I forget what the controls are. Um, so there are actually two gold teeth for Clanker. Um, and you have to shoot it as it's rising up. One side, if you walk in, will give you a mumbo token, and the other side will give you uh, a jiggy. So I believe this side is the first one, and I get a mumbo token for it. Or I might be wrong. Yep, mumbo token on this side. So you can actually grab it and then head back outside, and then you'll get, go onto the other platform and shoot out the other tooth. Hey, gaming is so much better in the sequel because you can go into first person and then just shoot be a first person mode but when you get it lined up just right you can also just shoot a volley of them and if they all hit that's that much better so okay we got the next jiggy um so this is what i'm talking about there's it's like he's got tubes but he's also got guts and in the original version of um banjo kazooie there's some beta footage he actually has like he was actually textured as more of a normal looking giant shark. Almost like a whale shark. But I guess they decided, nah, we'll just put him as part mechanical. Probably fits better, because if everything has kind of like a hexagonal pattern, you know, you don't really want to look like you're going on the inside of a live animal. But that's the question, is he really alive? Sure. Kind of. I don't know. Anyways, um, there are some of these large hoops in the inside main area of him, um, and there's a few paths that branch off. So um, on these side paths, I'm just kind of collecting the notes here, but they, um, this side gives you some notes, um, and the other side has a Jinjo in it. Um, and if you exit out of either one of those, you'll end up on his gills. Um, and you'll kind of see when he's going up and down when you're outside a clanker, his gills kind of flap open, and you can actually crawl in that way. But for first, we're going to go through these hoops. Um, so you just have to quickly go through the ones as they turn green. Um, this was Superman 64. We'd be flying through and stopping Lex Luthor's plans in his lovable si simulation. Um, yeah, there, if you get too close to those, uh, it'll knock you out and take off one unit of health. Um, I don't believe there's a way to get rid of those, but there's a reskin of them, technically, that are like trees later on in the game. Um, and since those are typically above water, you can actually use the Wonderwing ability that we're going to get in this stage, and that'll destroy them. But since these are always underwater, you can't use Wonderwing. 
now that the level of water has risen up, we can go ahead and get that jiggy. Um, and there should also be a flight pad on the other side that you can get to. But I'm going to get the last Jinjo over here with a few of the other notes. Once again, there's that weird, creepy music. So really, um, you won't have to use the water, like, surpass this stage. Um, they kind of give you a dose of, you know, using water mechanics, like swimming around. You won't use it in the next stage, or the stage after that. Um, Gobi's Valley, kind of use it. Um, because there's just stuff down below, but it's not necessarily required. Or maybe there might be some notes down where you have to use it, but it's not, like, irritating because it's just like a ring. Um, I'm trying to think. One after that, Mad Monster Mansion. I don't really think there might be some portions where you can, but once again, it's not really hard to navigate. It's the stage after that is an absolute nightmare. But when I eventually, hopefully, get to that stage, Rusty Bucket Bay, we can talk about that there. And here we fly up in the hole and we get the Wonder Wing ability for this stage. So there's only one um, move to learn in this one. And as Bottles is telling us, you get use gold feathers while using it and it makes you practically invincible. So as long as your gold feathers are there, um, you can use the ability. And besides the number ticking down, you'll kind of see that the feathers shoot out of him as you're using it. So we use it against those blades, and that way we're good to go. And they give you some refills, and then you can run back in. So by standard numbers, you have 10. Um, there is a way to preset to 20 gold feathers um, just like there is for red feathers and um, blue eggs you can increase those numbers as well I think red feathers are 50 which you can increase to 100 eggs I believe are 100 and then you can increase those to 200 and of course the gold feathers you can increase that to um, 20 um, so after I got that jiggy um, you have to climb out of the hole, because what we're going to do is we're going to jump back on top of Clanker, and as this flies up into the air, you can actually enter in the hole, and this will take you to the last Jiggy and the Witch Switch. Now these, you don't necessarily have to use the Golden Feather ability, um, because you, they're spread out far enough that if you're able to look through, you know, you can see um, and try to dodge them, as I'm poorly doing right here, and then I just said, screw it, just went with it. But they're not really going that fast, so there's the 100 notes. Like I said, this should be the last Jiggy, yep. 100 notes, last Jiggy, two honeycomb pieces, we are done with this stage. Yep, 23 minutes, so uh, I believe slightly less time in this stage than Treasure Trove Cove. So this stage is over. And then you fall right down into there. So I think you can actually fly up into that hole if you wanted to. Um, maybe it's an exit out hole only. I don't really know. But I typically just go outside and go fall in because you end up at the witch switch anyways, which you'd have to go through. So if you somehow were able to fly up in that hole, you'd still have to go through the blades twice. Because you'd have to go through to get to the witch switch and then go back through anyways. So you might as well just do it once and be done with it. So yeah, now we're just exiting out the stage. Go through back to this little hub area. And then we won't have to really worry about swimming for a bit.
And there should be one last uh, Mumbo token. Unless I already got it. I'm pretty sure I already got it. Yep. Um, well, you didn't remember my train of thought. But yeah, there's a Mumbo token, of course, on top of that. So, get as many Mumbo tokens as you can, because Mumbo will be throughout, and every time his number increases by 5. So we haven't seen him since the first stage, but he will be in the next stage, so it should be about 10. Pretty sure it's 10. And here we are in Brintilda. Going for reinforced girdle. Pet dog, his name is Leechmore. My sister sings her own band, Grunny and the Cauldron Crew. They're awful. And remember, Brentilda's stuff is randomized, so there's like a few different options each time. And that basically helps you for the Grunny, um, for the final area where you have to kind of remember some quiz stuff. So we hit that switch, and it opens up a grate. So once we swim through there, this will take us to the next um, puzzle room. Or jiggy room. Portrait. And yeah, I had 25 jiggies. It only used 7. I've still got 18 jiggies, so I'm well ahead of the curve. Um, which I think, you know, throughout most of the game, you'll kind of be feeling that, where you're like, yeah, I've got, like, a bunch of pieces. Technically, you can, like, even start unlocking multiple stages at once if you really wanted to. I don't really know why, but, um, and you think, boy, with all these jiggies, I should be good to go. There is a hell of a wall at the end of the game that requires you to pretty much use most of your jiggies that you have remaining to get through it. So, I'm just warning you now, you think you're ahead of the game, but at the end of the game, you know, it's going to hit you hard. So, so yeah, that's the next area, Bubble Gloop Swamp. Um, but we have to take care of the last, last witch switch. So we go back into the here, where the two um, previous puzzles were. We ground pound the switches, her eyes, and you get the jiggy there. Easy peasy. So that should be the fourth one. Yep. So. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So that is uh, Clanker's Cavern. So um, next time we will cover Bubble Gloop Swamp. Um, that's going to take a little bit longer. We're kind of at the point where every stage is going to be a bit longer. But yeah, so next time we'll cover that. So thanks for joining me. Um, hopefully I can start this back up, be a little bit more frequent, but yep, have a good night, day, night, whatever.